um, we feel welcomed and we've been assured of our security and everything. Thank you, thank you, Governor. Um, before we proceed to um, hear our chief guest, um, and also invite me your chairman to invite the chief guest, allow me to invite uh, the Secretary General. For those of you who joined us yesterday, yesterday we had a, a, a very engaging uh, meeting, an ad hoc meeting of UNCTAD, expert meeting, discussing maritime um, issues in Africa. And we were quite privileged to have the Secretary General with us, which was sort of a launching part to today's event. Right now, I want to invite uh, Dr. Mukisaki Tui to give us a, a short technical uh, speech uh, on, on, this, uh, on this conference. Dr. Thank you very much. Uh, the most technical speeches will be given by the members of uh, IAMI. Um, our hosts, the Kenya Port Authority, here represented by my friend, uh, retired General Kibwana, and the managing director, deputy mayor of, of the governor of, the, 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 of Mombasa County, Your Excellency Ambassador Nicolas Nyon of Belgium, and my colleague, President of IAMI, Jan Hoffman, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, may I make a disclaimer? I am a Kenyan. I'm a former minister of Kenya. In fact, uh, when I was seated there for the first time in nearly a decade, I saw a former colleague who was Minister of Foreign Affairs when I was in cabinet, Chirao Ali Makwere. Please. Thank you very much. I say the disclaimer not because I disown Kenya, but because I want to express my appreciation to Kenya without claiming credit for their hosting this meeting. When the preparations for hosting this meeting were made, I was hardly a year old as Secretary General of UNCTAD. And Ian Hoffman can confirm that I did not canvass for this country to win this competitive bid. So may I, on behalf of UNCTAD, express our appreciation and thanks to Kenya for winning the right to host this meeting. As the next host of the Blue Economy Conference, Kenya shall find a lot of value in a dry run with a conference about the challenges and opportunities of maritime trade and transport. Ladies and gentlemen, may I say a few things about how we at UNCTAD are related to this process that we are involved in today. To us, UNCTAD has three major angles in which it relates to maritime transport and which have been anchoring our participation in the work of uh, IAMI. First, the essence, the understanding that we all need ports and shipping to move international trade in goods. Of course, we are all hearing very phenomenally about the exponential growth of electronic commerce. And I'm going to host the first Africa e-commerce week in Nairobi this December. But in spite of the expanding E, the truth is whether you physically order goods and pay for them, or you electronically procure and remotely pay for products, the goods will physically have to be delivered. So in spite of the growth of e-commerce, the critical importance of maritime transport remains ever so important. In fact, efficiencies in maritime transport become critical for the successes anticipated under electronic commerce. Secondly, the maritime business itself is an important one in generating significant employment and in major incomes for many developing countries. Statistics that we call collect as UNCTAD shows a long-term trend of economic performances encouraged but driven by efficient engagement in maritime trade. Whether you're talking about shipbuilding, ship operations, or registration and scrapping of ships, you create substantial jobs that are important particularly for emerging economies. This is part of the core concern of our most important, the longest running publication of UNCTAD, which this year celebrates 50 years, the, the review of maritime transport. I'll come back to this in a few moments. And the third reason why we engage, or another uncle on which we engage on, on maritime transport, is that we are looking 
at the increasingly important issue of sustainability of maritime transport. As part of the Secretariat of the UN, dealing with Agenda 2030 on sustainability, we are very much aware that port cities are often the most polluted communities in most of the countries of the world. And the greenhouse gas emissions of ships continue to be an important challenge to climate mitigation. And therefore, how to clean, how to create sustainable port communities, how to improve the climate efficiencies, particularly containing the emissions from ships, is an important concern to us as part of the UN Secretariat on Agenda 2030 and COP21. For us as an organization, historically since we were formed in 1964, we have been looking at global trends and challenges on economy and trade from the perspective of developing countries. So even our approach on maritime transport bears critical attention to the concerns of the least developed countries, least developed landlocked countries, small island economies. So the development perspective for the most vulnerable among us continue to be a major beacon in our work as relates to the membership of IAMI. Our role, as Jan Hoffman just mentioned, is critically to provide data, our research findings, and our publications in a way that inspires and informs the discourse, research, and academic work that's carried out by members of IAMI, but also to learn from your experiences gather some of the findings that come from your work and put them at the disposal of our member states through high-level technical fora that we convene regularly in Geneva and try to impact policy at the national, regional, and international level. Just yesterday, some of you remember, in the meeting here, the ad hoc experts meeting, we discussed the critical importance of Africa in the next phase of maritime transport development. I did mention to my audience here yesterday that two, three things inspire our enhanced interest in African maritime trade in the period now and ahead. First of all, the recently signed continental free trade area, which aspires to create a free trade zone around Africa. Related to this, the growing logistical significance of this region, if you look at the virtual Silk Road, in the Belt and Road Initiative of the Government of China with the possibilities of integrating <coughs> Africa's hinterland to the maritime trade to the east. And third, the growing significance of Africa in the global value chains, particularly in the textile industry, where expertise, technical capacity, and sometimes inputs sourced in East Asia are converting into textiles in Africa for sale in the American market under the Ag African Growth Opportunity Act, AGOA. And that this relationship is not an ad hoc one-off, but the reality of foundations of potentially an important partnership that can relate to the development of maritime transport between the East, Africa, and the West. UNCTAD's technical cooperation continues to play an important role in an integrated way that we cannot segment trade facilitation, whether it is maritime transport, port management, uh, cross-border facilitation of movement of goods and services. We try to integrate perspectives and policy around these things. And we have an, a, a basket of uh, products that directly talk to this. Our most successful, most world-renowned is ASICUDA, the Automated System of Customs Management which is the standard customs management program in 79 countries in the world. Related to this is our port management training program, we call it Train for Trade, uh, and a peer training and critique program that has become very, very rapidly popular with the support of key cities in um, Porto, Marseille, and the port of Dub 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 Dublin in Ireland we are being able to substantially grow a card of medium level managers in the ports around the developing world with a shared sense of responsibility and comparing best practices as they attempt to improve in a concrete way what they do in their own countries. We relate this to the important work we've been doing 
particularly in easing cross-border movement of goods in the hinterland of developing countries, particularly in Africa. And here I want to express our appreciation to the partnership we have with uh, Trademark East Africa. I was very glad to hear from the ambassador of uh, Belgium, Nicolas Nyon, about how Belgium has become a partner in this. I want to express my appreciation to my friend, the immediate former Kenyan ambassador to Brussels, who was very important in our work in helping build capacity for the African, Caribbean, and Pacific countries in negotiating the post cotonou arrangements with the European Union. But uh, Belgium remains a partner to us here, and I express my appreciation that um, slightly more than a year ago, I recommended to the Secretary General of the United Nations and he accepted to appoint the former Deputy Prime Minister of Belgium as my deputy. Uh, Isabel Duran becomes the first woman ever in our 54 years history to be a Deputy Secretary General of UNCTAD, and that ties us closer together, I hope. Um, ladies and gentlemen, two weeks from now, I will be launching the 50th anniversary issue, special review of maritime transport by UNCTAD in the city of Hong Kong. And at this event, I'm going to mention again something that I did mention in our ad hoc expert meeting yesterday. The critical importance of a strong and open multilateral trading system to a predictable, stable maritime transport regime. In this study that I'll be launching, we demonstrate the truth that the prospects of seaborne trade growth are very substantially dampened when there is rising voices of protectionism and threats of tariff wars. So as I try to finish my brief statement, I want to add my voice in encouraging you to join the community of leaders who express their belief that the best system that has served us all well, the best foundation for a predictable trade regime for the whole world is a respect of a rule-based multilateral trading system and that no one ever wins trade wars. And indeed, the rhetoric of trade wars dampens the prospects, particularly of the most vulnerable, to benefit from an inclusive rules-based multilateral trading system. I very much want to express our appreciation for hosting the meeting here. I want to thank my colleagues and the countrymen and women of Kenya for being good hosts to this. And I want to commit UNCTAD to continue being a partner with you in research, in evidence-based advice for policy formulation for sustainable inclusion. And finally, I want to express my appreciation to my staff very ably present here, Hasiba Ben Ahmara and Jan Hoffman for the work they have been doing, and they will continue to be my good ambassadors to IAMI. Thank you very much for your attention.